Okay, so um, we're going to lump a bunch of things together here just to kind of give you a flavor of what the rest of the semester is going to look like. So uh, if you don't catch something right away here, just try to get the big picture of what's going on. And we're going to do a lot of this in greater detail as we go along. Okay, so there's two ways, as I talked about capital a minute ago, there's two major ways that uh, capital, uh, the capital structure is, is, is put together. And it either comes from debt capital or equity capital. I don't know why that red line is there. Let's go back to this one. Okay, so pretend that all the money you have, like I spoke in the other, this is all the money that we have available to our firm. And 25% of this is debt issuances, whether it's a commercial loan or something else. And the rest of this is stock or equity. Or equity. Our capital structure here would be 25% debt, 75% equity and that is obviously a hundred percent of all the money that we have available to to make decisions in the in the business uh, financial intermediation financial intermediaries are nothing more than the people that are in between so here is the here is your company here's your company and as an example there are shareholders who want to invest in your company and somehow shareholders want to give you money and you will then issue stock to these shareholders. Well, the financial intermediary is going to be the investment bank that's in the middle here. Let's make them green because we always think about these guys in green. So the investment bank creates the stock and issues it out and uh, and ensures that this transaction with the stock and this transaction with the dollars actually occurs. These guys are going to be a financial intermediary. Um, and you'll see them here under commercial banks and under, well, they should be an investment banks as well. All right, but any of these examples are institutions that help raise capital uh, for, for firms or for two different institutions corporate security issues, right? So here is an example of, of what we see happening in, uh, in the world in terms of the total number of the total value in dollars of uh, security issues. And so these are equities. And you can see that US issuers are nice and fat, but you see an even greater increase here in worldwide corporate securities. And so what we're seeing here over time is a growth that is occurring on the corporate side uh, and some of this, if you look here at, if we look here at the 2000s is when we have, a, some of this could be tech growth, particularly in tech companies and the way that we're going about uh, funding new firms, but there's an explosion that's happening over time. So these, these issues that we're going to talk about are, are bigger and bigger every time, every year. Uh, and this is where we're going to spend a little bit of time here. So let's, we're going to define the different ways that business organizations are formed. Sole proprietorships are a type of business entity that many of you may even get into when you're a small entrepreneur. Okay. These are the, he, these are the businesses that are uh, that are managed by uh, small individuals, and the key here is that this is that the word sole means one person. And uh, there is no distinction between the business and the person. In a minute, we'll talk about uh, limited partnerships and limited corporations. But basically, uh, you know, Joe Smith uh, goes and sets up a restaurant and he may call it, you know, La Casa del Taco, which I think is a real restaurant. I probably shouldn't use that uh, or whatever else he's going to use as a restaurant name. But he does everything under his own name. And so what's crucial here is that we identify that that structure still has personal liability okay so he's not getting rid of any liability when he operates uh, when he operates as a business and he's going to get taxed as if all of that income is personal income which may or may not be beneficial okay that is different than having two or more business owners and we're going to call that a partnership and what's tricky about the partnerships is that both are liable okay this is liable for every partner's actions. And what this means is not that each is liable for their own actions, 
but both partners are liable for each partner's actions. What does that mean? It means that if one partner goes off and does something with the money or takes out a debt or whatever else, the other partner is just as liable. So if one person bankrupts, the other person, you know, is is still on the note. All right. Limited partnerships. Um, this is very uh, limited partnerships or LLPs. I don't really like the distinction here. LL. Why am I doing this in a highlighter? Oh, let me figure out. Looks like I'm learning something new here. Uh, LLPs are really for things like lawyers and doctors, and these are called limited liability partnerships. Um, something that'll be more common for y'all if you go into entrepreneurship is limited liability corporations, okay, LLCs. Under LLCs, you're not limited to a certain number of partners, and you'll often see the word LLC. What's important here is that the liability, if the company does something wrong, this uh, entity that you've created then takes on uh, the liability. And different from LLPs, where you have more than one person, LLCs can actually be owned by one or more partners. So that's good to know. And that brings us to corporations. Corporations are legal entities that exist in and of themselves. Uh, incorporation occurs at the state level. That's important to know because you're going to uh, file annually with the state that is, and that's going to be separate from your income which is with the with the uh, with the uh, IRS but let's talk about LLCs again first we have the limited liability corporations okay these are usually reserved for smaller firms uh, smaller firms and they limit the liability they take the liability of the firm and they keep it at the firm, not, not the individual. And that's the whole point of setting up the corporation is that you have another entity that has that's out there. Next, you're going to have uh, S corporations, and I'll say S corporations and C corporations. You know, I'll just do it like this: corporations. And both of these is there. There are differences between them. I can do that better. There are differences between them. Uh, and while there are differences between these guys, not much better. The the point here is that S corporations have easier access to commercial funding, funding in general, but commercial funding. It's not it's not easy for an LLC to go out and create public equity, for example, or to issue bonds. But S and C corps, as they grow, as they get bigger, do have easier access to funding. And that's one of the reasons why you would go from, say, a sole proprietorship. And as you grow, you might turn it into an LLC. And then as that grows and gets much bigger and you want to increase your funding, maybe you turn it into an S corp, which is a very traditional uh, growth curve in terms of business organizations.